All right, let's take a look at clustering. We're going to do some clustering in Tableau. Now, there are a number of clustering techniques which are presented in the reading module. Keep in mind that Tableau uses just one of those techniques called k-means. So k-means is a distance-based clustering mechanism that creates k number of clusters based on the data points in the data space that are closest to those cluster centers. So it goes through a number of iterations to uh, identify where the center of the clusters are and tries to optimize that clustering solution. So let's go ahead and get started and see how that works. First, we'll open up the bike buyers data. Hopefully you've got that available somewhere. Uh, let's see. Okay, so when you open up the Bike Buyers data set, you can see this one has been modified a little bit. It's got a number of categorical variables in it, marital status and gender, but then it also has the numeric equivalents of those, marital status numeric, which is binomial, and gender numeric, which in this case is also a binomial, just uh, we only have the male and female options. Uh, a few more numeric fields. And then we also have uh, some uh, other attributes that have been converted to numeric uh, commute distance, which actually you can see is zero to one mile, 10 plus miles, one to two miles. So that has been converted into an ordinal numeric variable. And then same thing with education. So we did not do that. Uh, it looks like with region or occupation. All right, so just a couple things to keep in mind. All right, so let's go ahead and start clustering. And the way to do that is you just start dragging some variables in. So we'll start off just by creating a scanner. Let's make it between age and income. All right, so then we just have to disaggregate to get our scatter for those two, all right? And at this point, we can start clustering the data. So I go to the Analytics tab here, and you'll see I've got an option over here called Cluster. And when I drag that into my space here, you can see it says Create Cluster. And by default, it just uh, uses Tableau's automatic clustering approach to uh, determine a, a certain number of clusters. So I'm gonna hide the Show Me here, and you can see Based, based on age and income, we have five clusters at this point in time. And, and that is what Tableau's automatic clustering algorithm has determined is the optimal number of clusters. And if you go and look at the reading module, you can see the mechanism that is used to determine that optimal number. Even though Tableau assigns an automatic number, I could change this and say, okay, I want three clusters. And when I do that, you can see it automatically makes the change for me. If I delete it, then it will go back to automatic and give me five. So we have the ability to create whatever number of clusters we want. And there might be some cases when we want to specify the number of clusters because we have some kind of a theory that, uh, or some kind of a business reason that tells us, well, we need this many clusters. But clustering is an unsupervised method. So if you don't really have any uh, incoming theory, it's not a bad idea to let the algorithm and let the numbers, let the data actually choose the number of clusters for you. But that said, once you've uh, taken a look at the clustering result, you may want to change things around, all right? So the first thing we might do is say, well, what if we were to go back and bring in another variable. Let's say we wanted to bring in, um, let's see, we've got age, income. Let's bring in number of cars. All right. So now we've, we're down to two clusters with uh, just bringing in one additional attribute. All right. Now that's kind of cool. We've got clusters. We've seen that the clustering solution changes as we add and subtract variables, but what's going on in each one of these clusters? So in this case, if I click on my cluster pill here in my marks, I can tell it to describe the clusters. 
And when I do that, I get a nice uh, dialog box here and let's uh, expand that so we can see a little bit more of what it says. It tells me a lot of information about that clustering solution. So right now I've got two clusters and I can see 507 and 493. I've got a, a relatively even split and I can take a look at those three attributes I have in here and see if there's any kind of difference between the two. I don't know what the statistical significance is at this point, but I can see, okay, it looks like cluster two does have some older people in general. It does look like the uh, income is a little bit higher and it looks like we've got more cars. All right. So is that something uh, that we want to take action on? If we want to get a little bit more information about the clustering solution, we can click on the models tab and that brings us over here where we can see an ANOVA based on the clustering solution we've pulled in. All right, so uh, F statistics 704 for sum of cars. Yeah, very, very low P value with an F statistic that high. And you can see all three of these are significant at pretty much whatever level you're going to uh, set as your criterion for significance. So far, we could say, well, it looks like, um, you know, my older, richer customers have more cars. Okay, so now I can take a look at this and say, well, does cluster one or cluster two buy bicycles more or less? But before we get there, let's take a look at some other things we can do with cluster. All right, so we've got cars. What if we bring in gender? All right, let's take a look at gender. And let's take cars back out. Okay, so cars, so gender still gives us two clusters. Remember age and income, we had five, but we bring in gender or cars and we go down to two. Another thing to keep in mind is we can also bring in, okay, so we've got gender up here as a categorical variable. I can also bring that in and Tableau will do cluster analysis with categorical variables. Now, it does a little conversion and turns them into a, a, a numeric scale. But what's going to happen, even though it's going to cluster based on gender, if I go and bring up the cluster analysis and describe the clusters, So you can see it'll give me some basic information about the gender. So in this case, cluster one has more males than females. Cluster two has more females than males. Uh, you can see the age and the income have more or less um, stabilized. Uh, cluster one does have slightly more income than cluster two, but the age is fairly similar. If I go over to the models and take a look, well, I'm not going to be able to get any information on gender because categorical variables do not get included in this ANOVA. So I can't test the p-value here, but you can see the p-value for income and age are both non-significant now, even at the point nine significance level. So gender is pretty much providing all of the split information here. And if we were to drag the gender out and bring the gender numeric back in, what happens then when we look at the uh, cluster information? Yeah, so the same thing. So we, you can see it, it provides more or less the same model and the same characteristics for the other attributes of the model. It's just not calculating for the categorical version of gender, the p-value. But here you can see the p-value is zero and the other two are uh, non-significant. So we've got ourselves an attribute that's pretty much driving the whole thing. And that's one of the problems with binomial attributes like uh, dummies, you know, where you've just got zero or one or a Boolean, true or false. That boiling it down to just two values at the extreme opposite ends of the scale makes those variables way more important uh, than you, know, you would think otherwise. So that's always something to be careful about when you are putting a cluster analysis together and considering incorporating binomial values or other categorical values for that matter as well. So I could actually bring in, let's take out gender and bring in um, 
what was one of the ones? Okay, so region we uh, had in there. And now if we were to look at that model, okay, now we have three clusters. We went from five down to three, and we can see if we describe the clusters, now we can see that region ends up being, uh, looks like the most important split here because uh, North America tends to go into cluster one, Europe into cluster two, Pacific region into cluster three. Age is not um, hugely different, although income looks like there's a little bit of a split between North America and Pacific versus Europe. So if we go and look at our F stats, we'll see that, um, yeah, income is still significant. Sum of age is now just marginally significant at the 95% uh, confidence level, but we still don't have any uh, information on the uh, region. Okay, so let's take region back out and let's see if we can come up with another set. Okay, children we, we knew was in there. That takes us down to two. What about commute distance? Commute distance, we haven't done that one at all. That still takes us down to two. And if we evaluate that, yeah, we can see commute distance. Uh, it, well, all three are significant, but commute distance is right now the most significant compared, you know, based on this. Um, ANOVA, which lists them in order of importance, order of significance. All right. So coming down to the summary here, yeah, the commute distance is definitely longer for cluster two than it is for cluster one. Age, yeah, definitely different. Sum of income, different. So let's say we decided that this is a good clustering solution for us. So let's say we'll, we'll call this clustering by age, income, commute. Now, in order to set this up so I can actually now make my clusters a new variable, I have to bring in all of my cluster variables into my visualization in some, in some way or another. So let's go find um, commute distance numeric. I'll drag that in here. Okay, so I think that will let me do it. Let's see what happens if I try and drag it over here. Nope. So instead of bringing commute distance in there, I think I need to bring it into one of the columns or rows, which is gonna make my visualization not really all that meaningful but it will allow me to bring clusters over here and turn it into a dimension that I can now use. So I'm gonna actually call this cluster with distance, or cluster distance age income. All right, so now if I go to a new visualization, so we can drag in purchase bike numeric as my columns and let's make my cluster my rows. All right. Actually, you know what? Let's switch that. All right. So right now I've got the sum of purchases and since I've got a zero or one, this is basically going to be the same as my average. Uh, but now I can see with Cluster one, actually it won't be because I've got a slightly different number of people in cluster one and cluster two. So here you can see I'm about 52% likely in cluster one to buy purchase a bike, 44% likely in cluster two. So is that something I can uh, make some use of? And we can go back to our original sheet here and say, well, you know what, let's go ahead and edit our clusters. So let's say I want to um, take away distance numeric and go back to those original five clusters I had before. So let's close that now and I'll go back to my data tab and let's bring this new clusters measure in here and I'll call this cluster just by age and income like it says up there.
And let's see what we can find if we add another sheet and see what our purchase looks like there. So cluster age and income becomes my columns. Purchase bike numeric, my rows. And here's where it's a good idea to go back and just see, well, what do we have in each one of our clusters? And you can see 294, 294 in clusters 1 and 2, 159, 160, clusters 3 and 5, 93 in cluster 4. And the model tells us that uh, both of these are highly significant. All right. So let's go back to sheet 3 here. I'll widen it out a little bit. And now let's change that from sum to average. And you can see cluster two is the most likely to buy a bike, 0.56. We've got clusters one, four, and five that are about a coin toss, maybe slightly less than a coin toss. And then cluster three, which looks like they're way less likely to buy a bike. So what's going on there? Let's see if we can figure that one out. Cluster one, two, and three. Uh, so cluster three, way less likely. Okay, that's our oldest. It looks like it may have our most income as well, unless that's cluster, cluster four, which is at 122,000. Uh, that might be our richest. Uh, definitely not our oldest, but uh, they were... If we recall, let's see. Yeah, they were eh, kind of half and half on buying a bike. Let's see what cluster two tells us. All right, so cluster two is um, not the youngest, but they're younger, and they also have a good bit more money than the other younger groups. So. So they may have more leisure time to go out and maybe buy a bike and go mountain biking or have uh, road biking as a hobby that they uh, partake in. So that, that might be one way to uh, interpret cluster two. Cluster three, again, yeah, older, reasonable income, but uh, certainly not a lot more income than that 39-year-old group that is um, buying bikes more often. So I think the age is probably your differentiator there. Uh, at that age, if they may not be ready to take up biking if they haven't taken it up or they already have all the bikes they need. All right. So anyway, um, that is clustering in a nutshell. Uh, a lot of it is uh, exploratory. As you can see, you look and see what kind of solutions you can find with different clustering results. And then, then you work to try and interpret it and see if there's a possibility for you to uh, make that part of your modeling effort. If I do decide that one of these clusters, clustering solution is a really good one and I can take some useful action based on those clustering results, I then may make my cluster number my label uh, with which I try and predict any new values. What cluster would they belong to? And once I've got that assigned, does that mean there's someone I would like to spend some time marketing my bikes to? All right. So anyway, hope that helps you with clustering. And uh, let's get back to the reading module to see what we want to do next.